Thank you very much, Mr. Andrews. I will talk about the international and national uh, framework for against manipulation of sport competitions or match fixing, as it is more widely known. Next slide, please. First of all, let's say in general that uh, sport integrity is very high in our, uh, let's say, sport agenda. There are, as we heard before, five recognized areas of sport integrity. Also, according to UNESCO and the Kazan Action Plan, spectator safety and security, preventing harassment and abuse, fostering good governance, combating manipulation of sport competitions, combating match fixing, and last but not least, combating doping. Next, please. Starting from the international framework, we heard already from Friedrich what the IOC, the top of uh, the sport movement, is doing for uh, uh, combating match fixing. It is true that uh, the sport movement alone cannot uh, deal with uh, this issue, so we need cooperation, we need synergies with the uh, governmental institutions, with uh, law enforcement, with betting regulatory authorities, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. So regarding also the international framework, we have the, the governmental organizations that are dealing with the fight against manipulation of sport competitions, starting from uh, the United Nations with UNESCO and UNODC. Then we have the European Union, uh, which is, uh, let's say, a pillar in uh, the working plan 2021 and 2020 for the fight against manipulation of sport competitions. We have law enforcement with Interpol and Europol. They have a specific, Interpol has a specific anti-match fixing task force. And last but not least, the Council of Europe with the McCollin Convention, which is uh, in general, uh, the next slide please. The Council of Europe is, in general, according to my opinion, the most influential in the governmental organization in sport-related issues. Next, please. The Council of Europe has the Convention on the Manipulation of Sport Competitions, the well-known McCollin Convention, which is the only international legally uh, binding uh, condition and tool that we have uh, for fighting manipulation of sport competitions. This was open for signature in 2014, and now uh, in 2019 it gets, in, it gets into force. We have nine countries that have ratified the convention, the McCollin Convention, and we have about 39, uh, 40 countries that have signed the convention, some of them outside of Europe. And uh, as we said before, the McCollin Convention is our, let's say, our only legally binding instrument that we have for fighting uh, manipulation sport competitions. And it tries to make this kind of coordination that Friedrich said before uh, between the sport movement, the government, the law enforcement, the betting ecosystem, and all the major stakeholders. Next, please. Yes, this is the, uh, let's say, the scheme of uh, the governance of the McCollin Convention. We have the follow-up committee, which has, let's say, mostly uh, the strategic level. And uh, in this committee participated the, uh, the member states that have ratified the convention. And we have also the group of Copenhagen, uh, which is the operational branch of uh, the follow-up committee and the McCollin Convention with the countries that have signed the convention uh, of about 40 countries, as we said before, and we have, of course, the Secretariat of the Council of Europe. Next, please. In order to go to the national framework, uh, next. Greece signed the McCollin Convention in 2014 and uh, ratified the Convention in 2019. Uh, according to the Article 13 of the Convention, we have formulated our uh, national platform called EPATHLA. We are member and we chair. We are, uh, have the chair uh, in uh, the follow-up committee of uh, the McCollin Convention. And we have partnership in relevant programs with IOC, with Interpol, with uh, the other uh, stakeholders. 
Next, please. These are the functions of our national platform. Uh, as we see, we have uh, the task of the coordination of the stakeholders, monitoring and collection of information, reporting and developing applications for whistleblowing. I will show you later on. The analysis and evaluations of the reports that we receive, the triage process, the prioritization, let's say, of the cases. Uh, we are creating also the educational tools for uh, the athletes, for the coaches, referees, and all the, uh, the entourage in the, the sport community, and also the international cooperation. Next, please. This is the composition of our national platform. It's a five-member committee of high-level officials the chair is the Secretary General of Sport. We have also the Governor of the National Transparency Authority. We have the President of the Hellenic Gaming Commission, the regulatory authority of our betting system. We have a, one high-ranked official from the police and the sport prosecutor. Next, please. And uh, besides the main core, we have also an outer circle in our national platform that is composed of the Hellenic Olympic Committee, the athlete coaches and the referees association, the federations, the sport science universities, the betting operations and the anti-money laundering uh, authority. Next, please. So this is the, let's say, the operational branch of our national platform. We have three working groups. The first working group has to do with education and awareness raising. The second uh, working group has to do with the reporting and evaluation of the reports. And the third working group has to do with the monitoring. And the members in these working groups are from all the, from all the stakeholders that I showed uh, before. Next, please. Let's see uh, in this slide the flowchart of reports handling. Uh, for example, what we are doing when we receive a report about a suspicious game. Uh, we put it in the database, then we have the evaluation of the report with the working group two that is composed of uh, uh, two members from uh, the Secretary General of Sport two members from the police, two members from the Gaming Commission, and two from the National Transparency Authority. And uh, the output of this, uh, let's say, evaluation is that we classify uh, the reports in four grades, in four levels, green, yellow, orange, and red. The green and the yellow are going to the archive, while the orange and the red, they are going for further investigation, uh, either criminal investigation to the police and the sport prosecutor, or disciplinary uh, investigation, which goes to the, universe, to the federations, and the administrative investigation, which goes to the uh, gaming commission or the transparency authority. Next, please. We have to separate these two roads. We have the disciplinary and the criminal investigation. The disciplinary investigation has to do with the offenses that Friedrich said before, that they are in the code of the Olympic movement. Don't fix, don't bet, don't share in, inside information and always report, while the criminal investigation is according to our low, low, uh, 25, 27, 25, and Article 132 that criminalize uh, match fixing. Next, please. Regarding the international cooperation, we have cooperation. We are members in the follow-up committee. We are chairing this commission in the group of Copenhagen, in the uh, newly developed uh, body. Uh, which is the Mars Network of Sport Prosecutors in the Council of Europe. We are also in close collaboration with IOC, with Interpol, UNODC, and IPAX, that they are organizations that are dealing with anti-corruption, uh, let's say, practices and techniques. Uh, next, please. This is our website. Jorgos, do you have, slides, slides, you have, do you have many have more slides? slides? Uh, three more. We are, oh, please, be, yes. <laughs> if they are vital. Okay, so I, will, I will stop in one minute. Okay, thank okay. you, John. So, 
This is our website, www.epaflat.gov.gr. Next, please. Next. This is the reporting platform for whistleblowing, and the second one is the application of red button. Next, please. This is our e-learning tool that we are using for education and awareness raising. And finally, next, please. This is my last slide, John, uh, regarding the conclusions. Uh, as we said before, manipulation sport competition is a global threat for sport. It has no borders. Uh, a single country cannot deal with this problem alone. The sport movement cannot face this threat alone. It needs, uh, let's say, the help and the assistance of the governments. We need national coordination and international cooperation and the synergies between sport movement, governments and law enforcement and the betting ecosystem. Next and final, thank you very much.